<laughs> I know people here are very important because um, most of the people here are teachers and are facing lots of students like me. I'm facing about two million students every year uh, because I'm in a, a training school. Students come to the Oriental to get trained for their English ability and uh, Chinese ability and uh, test the preparations. So when I face my students, uh, every sentence, every, every uh, word I speak out, I know they have influence on them. So I should be very careful. So facing all these teachers here, I should be more careful. And uh, first I want to say that my English is not as good as those people speaking before me, and, uh, but I try to express myself out. Uh, well, um, first, what is New Oriental? New Oriental is a language school, and uh, it was established about uh, 16 years ago. Actually, I graduated from Peking University, you know, the best university in China, studying English, and then stayed in the same university teaching English. Uh, we call it public English. That is, every student who wants to study English go to a classroom and then walk into the classroom to teach. And then I tried myself, I tried to, to apply for American universities because uh, I'm, I'm usually not a leader, I'm a follower. Because uh, I never get, get excellent scores uh, in my middle school, high school, and the university. I was uh, number five from the bottom when I graduated from Peking University. Uh, so I usually, I uh, look upon my classmates as my example. So if they go to anywhere, then I follow them go to anywhere. So most of my classmates go to the United, or went to the United States uh, after they graduated from Peking University. And then I tried to follow them. So I took my TOEFL, GRE, and then tried my best to apply for American universities. Uh, of course, I did not apply for Harvard or Yale. Then I applied for uh, like a, a maybe some state universities or Hawaii or Alaska. <laughs> but even this university do not want me. They did not give me any scholarship uh, because I don't have any money to pay for myself. So I was delayed in China. Uh, and my, most of my classmates, they went to the United States to, to get a scholarship and they studied there. So I tried my best for three years, tried to get a visa from American embassy and they didn't catch the luck and they refused three times. So I have to stay in China here. There was nothing to do. So I began to go out to training schools to teach. Because my, my wife told me, if you do not make any money, and if you cannot go abroad, then the only thing we can do is to get a divorce. <laughs> so I try my best every day, almost every evening and the weekends to teach, uh, teach students English. Because, because many students want to study TOEFL GIE, and uh, luckily that I got a very high score in TOEFL GIE, so, and I'm a teacher in Peking University. So combined my score with my teaching skills, I became a very good teacher and uh, become little by little very famous among students who wants to study uh, test preparations. I taught in these uh, uh, schools, training schools, like three or five schools for two years. And uh, then I go back to, uh, but go back with my wife and collect, uh, try to, to calculate the money, how much we have made. And is it not enough to support me to study in the United States? And the answer is no, I have to work for another 20 years. <laughs> Then it come up to my mind, I said, uh, why, why don't I open a school myself, since it's an easier way to get a big money. Uh, then I went to the Education Bureau to ask them to give me a license, and uh, sitting almost every week in their office, uh, smoking with them for half a year. Then we get familiar with each other, and these, these, these officials, they tell me that, well, it's time for you to get a license now, since you are my friends. <laughs> Then I got a license uh, in November 16th of uh, 1993. So no November 16th is coming this week, actually. Uh, it's uh, our 16th anniversary for the Oriental. And then I got the license, and then I began to find, try to uh, uh, you know, register, find students to come. And the first class is only 13 students. I myself is the uh, teacher. Uh, teaching the whole course, and these students do not pay. They don't give me money because they say, if you want me to pay you money, we'll leave. Then I tell them, I will not collect you guys' money, but after uh, you finish all these uh, lectures, you know, finish my classes, when you think that my class is good, then tell your classmates to come. And every student, for the second session of the class, every student bring about three to five of their classmates, and all these students, they pay because they think my, 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 my lesson is good. 
So this, this is the beginning of the Neanderthal story, and little by little, more and more students came to the school to study, and I began to hire teachers and uh, you know, working staff, and then I hired my wife. Because my wife at that time was teaching in another school called the Central Conservatory of Music, you know, uh, Zhongyang Yin Yue Xuan, the, 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 the music college. She's teaching Germany, uh, because she also graduated from Beida. And then I said, we, I don't have any money to hire people outside, so would you like to walk into my small office, try to attract the students with your beautiful face? <laughs> and then she said, yes. <laughs> then she become like the, the, the front desk you know, girl, something like that. I tried to persuade every student to walk into the office to, to study in the Oriental. So uh, little by little, we have more and more students. By the end of uh, 1995, I already have about 10,000 students at the same time studying in the Oriental. And I got enough money, like about 3 million IMB in my bank. So I said, it's, it is time for me to go to the United States to see whether I should go to study or should attract my friends back here to China to work with me together. And also, because I feel kind of, uh, uh, kind of you know, not good that my, all my classmates are studying in the United States and some of them almost has become professors in American University. I, why I'm staying here, only working by myself. So uh, I got the visa uh, because I showed the US Embassy that I have three million Chinese yuan in the bank. I uh, tried to prove that I will not stay there forever. And they believed me. <laughs> they gave me the visa. Then I flew to the United States to see almost uh, all of my classmates, university classmates. One thing is that I want to see how they are staying there, what, what is their situation, and then the second is that I want to prove to them I have become successful also. Uh, and I, I visited about 20 of my classmates, and then I persuaded about uh, four of them to come back to work with me uh, in the Oriental. At that time, it was a small school, actually. And these guys uh, was convinced by me because they think like, uh, this guy in the university is a bad student because he's not really good. His, his, his brain is not really sharp. And he, he's making millions of RMB in China. Then what about we go China? We go to China, we can make even more money than this guy can do. <laughs> so I, I tell them to come back to work together in the Oriental. And these four people came back and then they stayed in the Oriental until today and they become billionaires, actually. Because in the Oriental, when I IPO in 2006 in NYSE, and then everybody who worked back with me uh, from the United States became billionaire, actually. And some of the guys who stayed in the United States, they didn't want to come back because they don't think that in the Oriental will be a success. Will be a success. And they stay there, they are still only making like about 50,000 United States dollars every year. So that's the chances, like when, when people have chances, you, you get also have risks. And these people believe in me because they think even though my performance, especially academic performance in the, universe, in the university is not so good, but they think I'm a good person. So a good person is, is much, much more important than a good academic performance in universities. Because you make people believe in you, and the people like to follow. They, they, they will think every, in your lifetime, you will never cheat other people. So they will follow. So even though uh, my academic performance in the university is not so good, but I have a good impression you know, among my, my classmates that this guy is a pretty nice guy. He never cheat anybody, and he's honest to everybody. He likes to share everything with anybody, except my girlfriend. <laughs> So that's why all, some of my, 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 my uh, classmates came back with me, and we formed a great group, actually, a team. We all have real team spirit. Nowadays, I have about uh, uh, 13,000 people working in the Oriental, including 8,000 teachers. So teachers from uh, kindergarten teachers, because we have, we, in the Oriental now today, it's not only a training school. We have uh, 43 schools, uh, in every big city in China, each school is a, actually is a very big, good school, uh, mainly on training business, that is short-term or one-term training for students, in, usually in English, but also sometimes even in Chinese language. But we also have, a, today we also have a kindergartens, 
We have kindergartens in Beijing and Nanjing, and we have grade schools. I built up a very big grade school in my hometown, Jiangsu province. Now the school has more than 4,000 students from grade 1 to grade 12, 12 studying in the school. And I'm trying to use this school as an experiment to uh, not only to you know, teach students have a good performance in academics, uh, in subjects, but also become a good person. I have lots of designs for students to share with each other, so to, to have the spirit of sharing, team spirit, collab, uh, co cooperation. And uh, like, just like the, the lady before, when I came in, uh, the name is, uh, yeah, Xiang, yeah, Xiang, talk about uh, virtues in us. I, I hope that one day, if you have time, uh, I would like to uh, accompany you to my school, and then maybe you can do some virtues in us, in, 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 in my school. That school is a really good school because 4,000 students are studying there. And so I have a farm there. I ask them to plant all, all kinds of you know, uh, uh, vegetables, uh, things like that. And uh, I have a big pool, uh, 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 a river in the, in, the, in, in the camps, on the camps. And then students, uh, I, I organize them to go compete with each other on fishing. I do not encourage them to compete with each other on subjects. Uh, yeah. So students usually, I, I think happiness, uh, like, like enjoy your school life and happiness is very important for students. But uh, this is what is the problem in Chinese education is. Your Chinese students, they study very hard. They get a very high scores, but they are not happy. They are not happy about their school life. They are not happy about their parents. And they are not happy about China. So the whole generation is uh, kind of is growing up in an unhappiness environment, unhappy environment. That's, that's the trouble of Chinese education. So I'm trying my best to do a little to see whether I can do something to make students happy. Even I cannot make every student in Chinese, in Chinese happy, in China happy, but I can try my best. So in the Oriental, today we have more than 1.7 million students studying in the Oriental every year. The total teaching environment is that I ask teachers, no matter what, you have to make students listen to you, and then when they attend your class, you should make students feel, enjoy your class. They're happy, they want to stay here because you're not only teaching students English or other subjects, but you're also teaching students how to you know, become a good person for, to, to get prepared for their future. And then at the same time, your language itself is kind of humorous, makes students want to listen to your language. So this is the whole like teaching style in the Oriental. We have we have been trying it for 16 years with much success actually. Otherwise, there was no way that 1.7 million students from four years old up to like 90, 90 years old actually studying in the Oriental. This is a training school actually, and then uh, uh, we have a book publishing. We publish about uh, like uh, eight million copies of books every every year. And uh, we have uh, online education uh, with uh, all kinds of contents, actually, mostly English, but uh, we also have middle school, high school contents and uh, with uh, professional training, uh, career training contents there. So we have uh, become a kind of, uh, we, call, we call ourselves New Oriental Education and the Technology Group. It is a group because uh, uh, we have so many people working here, we have so many students studying, we have so many different subjects of teaching students. So uh, in 2006, we decided to took this group up to New York to get listed so that we can get more money from world people to come back to support the Chinese education. Yeah. It was a very success, su successful story because at the beginning of the road show, the price uh, for, each, for each share is only, uh, the, 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 the underwriter tells us the most price you can get is only like eight US dollars. Then after the whole road show, there are so many people who want to buy the Oriental stocks. The price goes up to actually 15 to 70 dollars, and I decided decided that to use 15 dollars so that if we get listed, maybe there's more space for people to make money. And then when it get listed, the next day the price is 22 dollars, and today our price is 75 dollars. So it all goes up, and we get a lot of money truly from American people. <laughs> And we use the, all this money in Chinese education now. And the good news, uh, also good news is that uh, we, because, because the Oriental uh, set, uh, 
uh, as an example, there are so many training companies, educations who want to get listed today, and they get lots of investment from uh, foreign investors or from Chinese investors. So there are so much money now flowing into the education areas in China. And uh, we are facing even more competitors than we ever faced before. Because when these competitors they get the money, they invest money into marketing and uh, opening up new learning centers. And because we have already been a listed company, so it's very difficult for us to spend the money freely. Every cent you spend, you have to tell your investor, why do you spend this money? So we have to be very careful about spending money. Why are I seeing that my competitors be spending money every day, much more than we can spend? But it's all right, still we are the biggest education company here in China. And uh, we are still, because we, I think we have ideas. Uh, we have uh, you know, dreams. We know that what Chinese students they want. And my personal dream is that I'm actually, I'm trying to uh, open a real private university here in China. Because I, have my shares, I also have my shares in Oriental, and I'm planning to sell some of my shares and exchange back into cash. And I invest all the, I, I, I also as, I have established a charity uh, a trust in Hong Kong and for two years. And I have supported about 5,000 students, helping them pay their tuition in university study, those students from countryside. Because I, myself, was from the poor countryside. My mother and my father was illiterate. They don't know any word, even Chinese. But they support my dream of once to get a higher education. So I took the national entrance examination for three times. The first time I failed. The second time I failed. And the third time, I went to the best university in China. Uh, so I, ha I, I, I can see that I realized my dream little by little from a countryside boy. So nowadays I know it's much difficult for a countryside boy to become successful because they don't have money. During that time, about 30 years ago, when I went to university, the government paid for all the tuitions and all the living fees for me. So I'm very grateful to the government. But I know nowadays government cannot support every student. So I try my best to, su to support, to pay their full tuition for these students from countryside for about like 3,000 students every year. I, I've, I've doing that for more than three years. Be because before IPO, I don't have the money. After IPO, I'm using part of the money. But uh, still, there's still extra money here. Because uh, my wife and I uh, enjoy simple life. We don't buy luxury cars. We don't buy luxury like uh, uh, boat, yacht. And because if I want to use a yacht, I have lots of friends, they have a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> so just use other people's, right? And then uh, and I'm using the extra money to buy a land here in Beijing. And I, the government also have also granted me the, the, the right to buy a piece of land about, I think, uh, in, Chi in Chinese, it's uh, more than 500 mu. I don't know. Uh, yeah, acres should be like about 100 acres or so. Uh, around 100 acres. Uh, the only reason to give me the land is they, they want me, and I tell them that I want to build up a real, real private university in China. We don't have any real private university. There are some person who invested into a university, and uh, also they can issue students degrees. But you know, all these people, most of their purpose is that they establish, uh, uh, build up a campus, and enroll students, then they're trying to squeeze the students' tuition out to make money. So just imagine, you know, all the Chinese students, when they went to a private university, they have to pay the tuition and to make the school running. So because the school don't have any other, any other you know, financial support, they don't get any donation, uh, they don't get any money extra from parents. So that's to, when, when, when university only, is only supported by students' tuition, you can imagine what is the quality of the university? The quality of the building is not good. The uh, experiments, your know, facilities are not good. The teachers' qualities are not good because if you want to hire quality teachers, you have to pay higher salary. So my purpose is that I want to establish a small university, very small, only like about 3,000 students. Because you know, in China, university usually have, you know, how many students in the university, average speaking? Usually it's uh, 30,000 students studying in one university in China. Uh, so I only want to establish a university that can only uh, you know, uh, accommodate about 3,000 students. 
And uh, my focus is on humanity, uh, not on science. Maybe I will have mathematics classes or, uh, you know, the basic like physics or chemistry classes for them to, to know, better understand the whole world. But my focus will be on philosophy, social sciences, psychology, uh, maybe including politics or e e economy. And I want to make students, you know, the leaders of the future China. You know, because I think like as a leader, no matter in a company or in a country or in a school, the leaders should have vision, not techniques. Techniques is very important, but a vision is even more important. Virtues are more important. They are philosophical ideas. They are, you know, they, they, their sense of life and uh, they, their dream that to make a place, a better place for people to live is much more important than he has great techniques to create an atom bomb to destroy the human beings, you know. <laughs> so that's my, my dream. And I've all, already invested about uh, 200, I, 200 million IMB uh, on this campus. It will come up, I think, in the next three years. It will become one of the most beautiful but uh, small university campus in China. It's uh, at the foot of a mountain in Beijing. There is a famous mountain in Beijing called the Miao Feng San. I don't know whether you know or not. It's very beautiful in the, in the, in the autumn because all the leaves turn red on the mountain in autumn. And uh, the land is just, uh, the piece of land is just at the foot of the mountain and it will become very beautiful. I'm going to build up this campus in Chinese you know, architecture style. That when you look, it looks like a palace maybe. The, the design has not come out yet, but uh, this, this is you know, kind of you know, spiritual support for me to work even harder today. Because if I work harder today, I can get my price. I mean, the Neoriental price in the stock, the stock price will go higher, then I will have more money. And the more money, if I sell my shares, change into cash, then my dream will be easier to realize. So when I'm becoming old, my dream is that even though when I sit in the wheelchair, I still can wheelchair myself into the classroom to tell students, hey guys, I'm the founder of the university. Do not look down upon me even though I'm old. <laughs> That's my dream. Thank you. <laughs>